Hello everyone. So I wanted to share today a few of the garden related things that I got this year for Christmas. Um, now I don't have that many. There's actually only three things, uh, but I also wanted to show the box that Proven Winners sent out to us after the Creators Roundtable because there's some interesting things in there that I'm going to be trying in the garden next year, which is almost this year. We're only a few days away from the new year, which seems crazy. Now, I will say, um, well one, as I get older, it is funny just to see how your interests switch in like the types of gifts that you ask for and everything I asked for this year uh, was garden related. Um, but also, as much as I love my husband, he doesn't know kind of what I need in the garden or the types of things that I really want. Um, same thing for him, like I know the things he's interested in, but like the specifics, I don't necessarily always know. So we always tell each other the larger things that we want for Christmas. And then the surprises are more of like the small things like chocolates that we know each other will like. So I was not surprised by any of this these gifts because I asked for them specifically. Uh, but I thought it'd be fun to share, um, especially if one if you use any of these, let me know because some of these I think are pretty popular from Gardener's Supply, so I'm assuming other people have them um, and I'm excited to try to use them, but I haven't used them yet, so let me know if you do like them or not. And then um, one of the other things I got is, though I think unfortunately sold out, but I thought I'd share that as well. So I have the big thing right here. I think I'll start with the smaller things first. All right, so first up, I got, comes in a set of two two new grow lights and these are let me pull up my phone because i'm not going to remember exactly what the name is but they're from gardener supply and they are the high output led fixtures two inches with two feet not inches two feet with magnetic clips um set of two and these are definitely more expensive. So what I used to start seeds last year, which was the first time I used lights, other than that I've just been putting them in the window, um, definitely much more efficient to have your own grow lights. But I used just lights that I think I got from Walmart, like shop lights, and they worked really well, but I did have to raise and lower them. What I wanna do this year is kind of incorporate it potentially into a bookshelf and not have to worry about raising or lowering the lights. So that is why I went with these because these are supposed to be powerful enough that you don't have to do that even with seedlings. So, so fingers crossed that that is how these work out but yeah I'm really excited to try these. I only needed, I think I only need two because I don't start that many seeds um, especially since I don't have a lot of room to plant all the things that I would start. So yeah, I think two should be good enough, at least I'm hoping, but here is kind of my idea of what I wanna to try to attempt to do. Um, basically, I would like the idea of turning two of the shelves in the bookshelves that I don't have yet into little grow stations, at least during the time when I'm starting seed, so during the spring, um, but I, my plan is to get like two magnets on Amazon, stick them to the top of a bookshelf, and then these are magnetic, so they come with these clips. Actually, quick note, so they came with four clips, two for each. One of the clips had been bent too wide, so it wasn't sticking on, but I called customer service, and that same day they sent out another clip. So yeah, and they were really nice. They also said, since I called because it was an issue with an order and they were sending something out and it would have been free shipping. And they were like, is there anything else you want? And in the moment I couldn't think of anything to take advantage of free shipping. So unfortunately I didn't take advantage of that. Um, but it is nice that they were able to send another one of these out so quickly. Um, but yeah, I'll have the magnets in the bookshelf underside of it. And then I will stick this to it and then I'll have my seeds kind of sitting in the bookshelf to start. At least that is, my plan, we'll see if it actually works. And then once the seeds are done and ready to be moved outside, I can either just pop this off and use it as a regular shelf again, or I can leave it on there and put some of my plants that like a little bit more light underneath the grow lights. So I'm hoping that works out. And again, then I don't have to worry about creating a whole mechanism for like raising and lowering the light. So I'm hoping those work. I'm hoping those are worth the extra money, but I guess I'll find out this spring. So the next thing I got was, something I saw on Instagram and was influenced by successfully. 
And this is called, again, let me pull up the exact name so I say it correctly, but it's called Phantom Flora, which I think is a really pretty name, by Tyler Thrasher, who I did start following on Instagram now. Um, and this is a flower pressing book. So flower pressing preservation book. You don't press the flowers in here, but you can attach the pressed flowers to it and kind of create a little album. So it comes with, so this was empty. It was just like a plastic empty pouch. Actually, if I open this up, So you can see there on the back of the cover is just an empty plastic pouch and then you can put any flowers that you want inside of it to make your cover. Now since the only pressed flowers I really have right now are my pansies, so I need to press a lot more next year, a lot more different varieties, that is what is in here. But they're not glued in or anything, they're just in that plastic pouch and whatever the material is, it doesn't slide around. So these have stayed in place ever since I put them in there. Um, now. Other things I have to figure out how to do is how to attach the flowers to the page. Let me show you what the pages look like on their own first. So they look like this. On the screen, it kind of looks like they are um, like a pure solid white, but they are actually kind of a little bit more transparent. Let me see if I can, I need one more hand. There we go. So you can kind of see my hand there to see the translucency of this. Um, and then at the bottom, there's a place to kind of write what's in there, the date and the location. Um, my plan though to use this is to attach the pressed flowers here and then write like what they are and the year of my garden. Um, so I probably won't have as much from 2022 because I've already pressed what I had and I didn't press a lot and do a lot more pressing in 2023. Um, and then I'll kind of add that to this book and I'll have something to look back on. I don't know yet kind of how well they'll stay preserved in here. Um, I imagine that they'll dull over time, but what I have learned so far is to not use Mod Podge. So I got Mod Podge because that was recommended for like decorating cards and envelopes and that has worked fantastic for those. Um, not so great for this type of paper. Not terrible, but again, not the best. But you can see here, maybe you can't even really see, um, but basically the page started to crinkle and crease with the Mod Podge. So that is not going to work. I think I need to use less liquid for these. So maybe just like tiny little drops of glue or even um, I think I saw in the photo some people had tape um, and I think that still looks pretty. So I might just do that. But basically I've learned Mod Podge, not the solution I'm going for, but yeah, that's all I have in here. I just had to add some as soon as I got this because well, one, I wanted to test out and see what would and would not work, but two, I just, I feel like I had to add my flowers in here. But yeah, I'm really excited for this. I plan just to treat this like a photo album and just have it, you know, out and add to it throughout the season. But I really, really love this. I do think it is sold out right now, unfortunately, um, but I will link it below in case it does come back into stock. And I'll also link to um, the creator's Instagram account so that if he does ever release it again or something new, then you can kind of follow along there. Um, now I will move on to the largest item, which is right next to me. All right, so this, is the last thing I got. Um, hopefully you can kind of see it there. Maybe I will show it to you on the ground as well. But this is the lattice plant stand from Gardener Supply also. And it does come, you can get it in a set where it has just the centerpiece and the two rounded corners. Um, but I just wanted this middle part because I plan to use this for my herb rack in the garden next year. So what I've been using up until like this past year, what I've been using for my herbs is a wooden plant stand, three levels just like this, um, but it has sort of an issue with it that I don't necessarily love. I mean, it's worked fine so far, but basically if I turn this to the side, hopefully you can see that there's no overlap between the two shelves. Whereas with the wooden rack that I've been using for my herbs, the shelf below is kind of set back a little bit um, so that half of the shelf is covered by the shelf on top of it, the other half sticks out. So to put my herbs on there, they were kind of getting bent or growing like this way um, and kind of stunted in the back. So I wanted something like this where each shelf again has absolutely nothing above it. 
Um, so that should work out really well. And then the reason I didn't get the rounded pieces on the corners was because I have the two black metal plant stands that I got last year and that I added to the garden and those are gonna go on either side of this. So I'm excited to have this in the garden next year. I think the herbs will definitely like it a lot more. I think it's about the same width. Um, so it's not gonna take up any more space like width wise in the garden. It might stick out a little bit more forward, but I know I have room for that. So now it's just sitting in here, kind of a place to store things, but starting next spring, this will go out into the garden. And I might look to just cover it in the winter, I think, because I am trying to leave as much stuff outside as I can, because there's not a ton of space in here to put all the things outside. So I think once it goes out, it will kind of live out there forever. This is a much better look at the plant stand. So there it is. And then right behind it is one of the stands that I used for herbs in the garden last year that I use again. And my fern is still just sitting on there. Uh, I will go through what's in here. Now, what is really nice is the fact that getting this stuff sent from Proven Winners means that I don't have to budget for it for the spring because a lot of the stuff that's in here was stuff I was going to get, maybe not necessarily the same brand, but for example, there's like plant food in here, which I was going to buy for next spring. So let me show you what is in here. Um, there are two fertilizers. So this is a water soluble plant food for flowering plants. So I'll use this on my flowers. This is also um, premium continuous release plant food for flowering plants. Um, so this one, let me make sure I'm not making up things that I say to you. Where are the instructions? Oh, so here it says, yeah, I can feed them up to six months. Um, so it is meant to be like added into the soil and then release over time. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'll add this when I'm first planting my flowers um, and then I will use the water soluble one as like my more regular fertilizer. Um, what I've used in the past, I think has been miracle Grow for flowers, Bloom Booster, Bloom Booster, miracle Grow. Either way, it was formulated specifically for flowering plants. So this is just gonna take the place of that. I've never been too tied to a fertilizer brand. I kind of find that most of what I use seems like it's working. Um, so I probably will still get the Fox Farm fertilizer that I use for like my seedlings and my vegetables. And then hopefully this can get me through the next year with all my flowering plants. But I also wanna do some testing with some of this stuff. Um, for example, I might like plant a flower with just this um, and then plant another one with that also, but then give that the liquid fertilizer too and see if there's a difference between just putting the plant food in there and not, I don't know, kind of play around with some garden experiments. Um, another thing I want to experiment with are these eco pots. So I remember, I feel like I remember vaguely hearing about these um, mostly from garden answer videos and from what I remember, well one they came out with these um, and the whole point is that you can plant this whole thing into the ground. It will um, disintegrate but also feed your plants. So it says there's protein rich plant food built right into the pot's wall. So you plant the entire thing, which I think is fantastic and if that's kind of the direction that the entire plant world goes or gardening world goes where you can uh, compost these right into the ground with it instead of the plastic pots. I think that's great. Now I could be making this up, but I feel like years ago when this first came out, there was a different version of it. And in a garden answer video, somebody said like there were problems with it disintegrating all the way. But I do know when we were there, they talked about how they've done a lot of improvements. So yeah, I'm gonna try these out. Um, another test I kind of wanna run is planting a plant in this, in a pot, planting another plant in a pot without this and seeing if there is a difference in growth. And then I'll either fertilize them both in the same way or not fertilize either at all and see how they do. Um, I also wanna see if these actually do break down in the pot or not. So that should be another fun test to do. Put these back in the box so I don't make a disorganized mess. Um, next is, what is this? Is this my plant food? No, oh, I know exactly what this is. Uh, this is the WaterWise drip kit. So this was 
the first drip kit I got back in 2020. I think that was the first year, 2021? I think it was 2021 was the first year that I added drip to my garden or ir irrigation system. And then this year I added another one from the brand Carpathian. So I had two drip systems this year. Uh, so this is really nice because this means I don't need to buy any replacement parts. I don't think I'll use this as a whole new setup unless what's currently out there that I leave out there all through winter that I did last year and it was okay. So hopefully it's okay this year. Um, but if I do have to completely reset it up, I have this whole kit. If not, then I'll just pull the pieces from here for any sort of replacement that I might have to do um, to the existing setup because the proven winners <coughs> kit in the front garden right now is set up to basically all of the raised beds. So I have four raised beds out there this kit covers all of them. And then I think I had it to some random pots. Last spring, when I kind of went through and turned everything on again, there were a few, I think maybe one or two emitters that were broken and needed to be replaced. Was it the emitters or was it the tube to the emitters? Either way, I did have to replace a little bit. So I have been ordering like the replacement parts or additional tubing online from Proven Winners. So now having this kit means that I won't have to do that. So that is nice. Um, and then lastly is this auger, twist and plant auger. Now I don't really have a huge need for an auger because I don't have a yard. So I'm not like digging in the ground except for the parkway in front of our house. So again, that's what I call the area between the sidewalk and the street. And the soil there is very hard to dig in. So this past end of spring when I was moving the tulip bulbs down from up here to the parkway, I just had a little hand trowel from Amazon that um, broke and I had to super glue. It's not a very sturdy hand trowel, but it was very hard to dig in there. There's trees down there, so I think there's a lot of roots. I think the soil also is just very compact because I'm pretty sure, I don't know if the soil goes like all the way down or if it's sitting on top of cement potentially. Um, so it's very hard to dig in. So I actually had, I haven't opened this up yet. I actually had an auger in my Amazon cart just a few weeks prior to going to this event because I wanted to see if it'd be an easier way for me to plant bulbs. Actually, what happened was I was walking down the street on one of our regular walks. I saw a woman in her parkway using an auger and I was like, ah, that is what I should do. Um, so I added one to my cart. It was relatively cheap because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on something that I didn't know if I was really going to use often. Um, but I'm also probably assuming that the quality is really poor on those because I don't think they're the most well made if they're only like $20, but who knows? I didn't get a chance to try it because when we were at the event, um, they had the owner of the company that makes these with proven winners and he was talking about it and you can tell that it's obviously very well made. There was another attendee there who was saying like she has really tough clay soil and she doubts it'll work there and he kind of challenged her to try it and see if it works or not. So I don't know, we'll see. But I am looking forward to having something more higher quality to try using an auger in the parkway um, compared to something on Amazon that might not be as good of quality. Now I am gonna have to find a way to open this, but I am a little bit nervous to use this because I do know that if you don't know what you're doing, which I do not, it's very easy to like give yourself damage to your elbow or wrist or potentially break your elbow or wrist with the drill. So the YouTuber Dig Plant Water Repeat uh, made a video going over safety instructions. She was also at the event, um, but I watched her video once. I'll link it down below. I'm gonna rewatch it again before I do this. Like I know we have a drill. I don't know if it's the correct type of drill. I've never really changed all the settings on the drill, which I know you're supposed to do with this. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but let me see if I can actually get in here and get this open to show you what it looks like. Oh, okay, got it open. I was trying to open the top and you're supposed to open the side. So this is what it looks like. And it is very, very heavy, which I'm gonna associate with good quality, even though I don't know if that is the correct association to make. Um, but this goes into the drill. There are some instructions here. Boop. So yeah, I'll have to figure out how to actually use this. Probably I think around late May, no, early to mid-May is when I move my tulip bulbs 
down. And we'll also see this spring if they actually come back after I move them down, because if they don't, I might not move them down at all. Um, but if I don't end up using this, then I will either give it to a friend or someone else nearby who does garden a lot in ground and can use one of these. So I think, I think that's everything. That was everything that I got for Christmas myself and then everything from the Proven Winners box. Now I also wanted to mention that I have worked with Park Seed in the past. They've sent me some seeds and they're always really pretty. Well, I guess I choose the ones that I think are gonna be really pretty and then they are, but Park Seed has given me a discount code and this is the first discount code I've ever had, so that is exciting. Um, but it's 15% off through the end of January. So it's all of December, going through the end of January. So if there is anything that you want to pick up, I wanna share the code with you. It's Chicago Gardener 15, and it is a, what is the word? Commission code, that is the word I couldn't think of. So it is a commission code, mean, meaning that if you use it, you get 15% off, and then I think 15% goes to me. But how I want to use it is I want to donate any of the commission from it to a local nonprofit here called Feeding People Through Plants. And they do a lot of work just to make sure that the homeless people in our community are fed and housed and getting them through, especially the cold winters here in Chicago. So if you do use that code, any of the money made from it will be donated to them. And I'll post like screenshots of the total amount and then screenshots of the donation going to them I think probably through Venmo and I'll share that here. Um, but also if you don't feel like using a commission code, uh, I think it's 15% off all first orders if you're buying from Park Seed for the first time. So I just wanted to let you know that as well in case you are still looking for any after Christmas garden gifts for yourself. So I think that is gonna be everything for this video. I'm just looking around and making sure I didn't forget anything that I got. Um, but let me know if you got anything garden related as a gift this year, if you do find yourself asking for garden specific things or not in the winter. Um, but it's definitely kind of nice to see how my interests have changed over the years because it definitely used to be more like clothing and makeup and now it's more things for my garden. And who knows if that's, you know, gonna change in another 10 years or not. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.